Thank you for joining me for another episode of Cop Stories. Hey, look, real talk though. You guys, you've been amazing. Thank you for the support. A lot of y'all have been reaching out. Some of y'all have been sending stuff to my Cash App, my Venmo, my PayPal. I love you all most definitely. But look, today I'm gonna do something a little different. Today I'm gonna talk about some police training. The best training that I've received. We all a little different with the training. But this most definitely was something that was different for me. Oh wow, and that's what we're gonna go over today. Okay, so look, another episode of Cop Stories. Look, let's do this today. Cop Stories, episode 17. Take one. I always wanted to do that. Let's rock. As a homicide detective, you are as strong as your word. And in the community, if your word is not strong, if your word is not your bond, you might as well just go do something else. Police training. Early on in my career, first of all, I joined in 1986. And when I joined the police academy in 1986, the person in charge of training back then was Lieutenant Duckett. Dude was tough, okay? When I say tough, tough. He um, he stayed on us. Um, I damn near wanted to quit. This dude was so tough, man, coming from you know, coming from the streets of D.C., not, you know, with the military experience. Man, this guy was hardcore. But that training is what saved a lot of people's lives, man. This dude, Lieutenant Duckett, was an amazing instructor. He most definitely was, was just vital in just me being, even though I knew the streets, knew this and knew that, but this dude just taught you stuff, man, to just put your mindset where it needs to be as far as how to keep yourself safe, how to keep others safe, how to keep the community safe. He just was, um, I know a lot of you in the police department heard of him. Lieutenant Duckett made a shout out to you. But later on in my police career, um, like I said, I did a whole bunch of training. Most of my training was dealing with um, detective work because most of my career I was a detective. And with those 27 out of 29 years as a detective, I received a great deal of training as a homicide detective, which I was for 23 years. Um, two years even i even did one as a contract so a total of three years um sexual assault so a lot of training dealing with those kind of things and i've had other kind of training dealing with conflict resolution uh man i can see and go down through a whole list i'm not even gonna start so that's that we we'll waste time on the video with that kind of stuff but the point i'm trying to make is i received a great deal of training okay kudos to mpd for that now the most intense training for me that I've ever been involved in came later in my career. Um, I don't remember what year it was. Maybe I retired in 2015. Maybe it was 2013. Maybe it was 20. I don't know when it was, but the point I'm trying to make is it was when all of this active shooter stuff was, was coming out with the guys going around doing the shooting in the schools. Um, I think it was after the incident in Florida, I believe. I'm not really, I just cannot remember. But that's the most intense training I've ever received is active shooter training. I'm going to go through this. I can't give up everything. I don't even remember everything, but I remember some of the key stuff. And the training was remarkable. Sergeant Yarborough is a beast. Okay, Sergeant Yarborough is probably one of the best who have ever done it. I know you probably see this video. Man, let me tell you something, man. You deserve all the kudos, all the shout outs that um, you most definitely um, should get when it comes to a lot of us members on the police department, just as Lieutenant Ducker early on in my career. As my career went on and later on, Sergeant Yarborough was a monster. I mean, this dude, man, he, you know, this one of them dudes, man, he, you wouldn't even know he police walking through the hood, but he just was a straight up, straight up guy and with this training active active shooter training um when they did it, it was just it was a lot of us detectives there and you know for whatever reason i don't know why they didn't start with the officers maybe because of 
um, the needed officers on the street. I don't know what that's, that's, that's not important. The point I'm trying to make is the active shooter training for us detectives. This is what went on. Now, when I first showed for the training, the training was over at DC General, the old DC General Hospital. It was one of the buildings over there. And everything was nice and set up. Man, and you know, at first I was a little hesitant. I'm like, man, I don't wanna go through three, four days of this. Three, I think it was three days. I don't wanna go through this mess. Man. I don't got time for this stuff. But I knew it was being given by Sergeant Yarborough, well respected. So whatever it is he have to offer, I'm most definitely willing to sit there and, um, and learn from him because he's, like I say, he's one of the best who have ever done it on the police department. He's in retirement now, but most definitely, whew, wow. Can't stress how much he's a 100% type guy. But with that, um, like I said, I can't go over every part of the training, but um, with active shooter training, um, the instructors, I don't know if it was one or I don't know how many different instructors it, it was, but they're armed and the goal is to teach us how to to deal with an active, an active shooter situation. You all seen a lot of different um, news media outlets putting um, videos and, and, and news coverages in reference to active shooters in schools um, and just the, you know different place mostly in schools I believe and when you think about it it's, it's very chaotic and I even remember um, just reviewing some of the stuff that went on in Florida how they were showing videos of the officers um, hesitant to go inside the building to do their job and save the kids. You know, a lot of people look at it like um, punk police officer, he was scared. Um, maybe he didn't know what he was doing. Maybe he never had the training. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what it was. But when I saw that, I'm like, hold on, come on, Slim. These are people, babies in this building, man. This, this is what we do, you know? As the horror was unfolding inside Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, students taking cover to escape the gunfire Outside, the school's resource officer, Broward Sheriff's Deputy Scott Peterson, hearing the shots. Yeah, I think we got shots fired. Also, shots fired. 1200 building. Heading toward the building in this golf cart, then taking position outside for 27 minutes, never entering the building. When it was all over, 17 people were dead, another 17 injured. Tonight, that Florida deputy is under arrest, charged with 11 criminal counts, including seven counts of child neglect. A state review finding Peterson refused to investigate the source of gunshots, retreated while victims were being shot, and directed officers away from the building. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement saying there can be no excuse for his complete inaction and no question that his inaction costs lives. In many cases, police officers don't have the luxury of waiting for backup, at least not anymore. In a mass shooting, experts will tell you that every second counts. The priority is ending the threat. Yeah. Yes, so saving as many lives. But back to our training, um, like I say, the, the training staff, they're armed with um, the assault rifles. Inside their assault rifles are, are, are paint bullets. So it's, it's live. The sound effects are there, um, the noise, the, 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 the children. Uh, I mean, just, just the whole atmosphere it's just so real. You're going into a building. You don't know anything. During the training, we're taught how to enter, how to 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 go towards the um, the, the the aggressive assault. Now, did you hear what I just said? Towards. Okay, that's key. When you get in these scenes, man, you can't be acting like like a punk. I'm running. I'm hiding. I'm scared. After shooter training, you're going in. Okay. So, um, I just remember the, the one of the days of the training, it may have been the last day, but um, we're, we're out in formation, out in front of the building, and um, it was game time. The noise, all you hear is this. It's chaotic, chaotic. Gunshots, noise, children, people running out of the building. But now, we have to go in the building. I think maybe four, maybe four of us, I'm not sure. Um, we're taught how to, you know, how we get in the position and everything. So we're going to the building. You, you, you listen for the gun, the gunshots, the noise, where it's coming from, because we're going that direction. We're not going the other direction. We're going towards the gunfire. Yes, our lives are in. Just imagine this is a real situation. I know it's training, but the training was so real. Trust me, it was beyond real. We're going towards the gunfire. 
we have to clear rooms. Um, we have to make sure we're not shooting the wrong people. Um, we have to make sure that um, who's the victim, who's the suspect. Um, we're doing all that stuff. So we, 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 we're going through, through this. We get to a room where we, we don't realize where the suspect is and there's hostages inside. There's children in there. Of course, not real children, you know, little silhouettes, whatever. But the shooter is real. He's in there with that big old assault rifle that's blast is gonna blast you with them paint bullets. And um, during the course of trying to get to him, there could be other shooters. That's what I'm saying. You really have to concentrate and pay attention to what you're doing. That's why the training is very important. So when we get there, we have to make entry into the room. We have to watch our rear to make sure no one is coming behind us. We have to make sure no one is coming in front of us. We have to do all of this, think, concentrate, pay attention, but we have to go inside this room and save these children. Yes, we have to risk our lives, but we have to save this, these children. So we make entry inside the room. There's, there's gunfire, boom, 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 boom. There's a lot of boom, 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 boom. We're firing, they're firing. Of course, you know, it's paint bullets and everything, so no one is actually getting hit. But it's just, it's so real. And the point I'm trying to make with all of this and mentioning the training is that um, we have to be ready. Uh, we see a lot of this stuff um, on television, um, you know, how they do things, like the SWAT, um, the show SWAT. And the training is intense, man. You have to really be in tune in what's going on. You have to pay attention. You get out in the streets, it's real, man. It's real. And no doubt it's real, and I'm quite sure, well, I know for sure, that some people were probably a little nervous. Um, you, you, can't, you can't fear the job. Um, I know the average, the average person, no one's going to run towards gunshots. I've seen a lot of videos of shootouts in the hood or whatever. Man, people, they haul ass and they're running from each other, okay? But on a job, man, when you're going towards, you get that call to go towards an active shooter or a shooter or a man with a gun, um, you, 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 your, your mindset kicks in. You're thinking about not, nece not necessarily all the time. You're thinking about um, um, just your training. A lot of it is your common sense. A lot of it is just survival mode. And when we did this active training shooter activities, just how to look around the corners, um, how to clear the rooms. Oh man, you know, how to look out for your fellow officer when you're advancing and everything. Sergeant Yarbrough did a hell of a job, man. I learned so much and like I said, that training, I learned so much from Lieutenant Ducker early on in my career, but this actor shooter training was very intense. I know some people will be like, oh, it wasn't. Man, let me tell you something, man. A lot of you guys who are in the military, you most definitely can relate to what I'm saying. I didn't have any military training. Everything I got came from the police department. And just going through that training, man, it just made me appreciate more some of not just the training you all went through during the course when you all in the military, but just the real life situations that you all experienced during your career in the military. Guys on the police department across the country, there's some of the real life situations that you guys have experienced. The actor shooter training um, is so real. Um, I don't think is 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 meant for everyone. It separates, it separates you, man. It separates this from that, and it's, it's not for everybody because you're asked to go towards a shooter who's firing more than likely AK-47 or some other kind of assault rifle. Yes, your life is in danger. Yes, you may get killed, but that training, man, it was it was. It was the best, the best I've received on the police department. And that's something, that training, it should have continued. I don't know when it stopped. All I know, I'm glad I got that training. I work in an environment around children at school. So, um, you know, I don't have a, a mob with me to do this and to do that. But I'm just glad that I was able to get that training. And in retirement, I moved on to working in a school with children, whereas, um, you know, I know what to expect. I can help the situation. I can better prepare um, things if something was, you know, to occur. So most definitely, I think that's training that every law enforcement officer in the country should go through because you never know when you have to arrive at a school building 
or a church or just some establishment where there's a lot of people, you can't sit out there with your with your with, with, with your ass up in your skirt. Excuse the way I'm saying this. You can't sit out there all scared and all nervous like with the guy doing the floor that he was hiding. Man, let me tell you something. You have to go. You know, you have to get in there. You know, all the after training shooting, they ain't teach us to wait for SWAT or ERT. Nah, let's go. Let's go do the we're training you guys how to do this. Okay? And that's what it's about, man. So I, again I appreciate Sergeant Yarborough. That training was the bomb. It still, you know, lives with me today, just being around the environment where kids are in school. So that's another episode of Cop Stories. I'm gonna get back to the cases next time. I'm trying to decide what case I'm gonna do. Hmm. I'm gonna check out my library and see what's up. Other than that, I'm out of here. Peace.